Hello, every pony. This is Rolsis. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done a video here on YouTube, but this is actually a special occasion. Today, I'm going to actually show a tutorial on uh, shading. <laughs> For those who do follow my uh, my art on DeviantArt and uh, my comic series on Tumblr. I'm going to show how I do my shading for those characters and the background and whatnot. <laughs> whatnot. This is actually a special request from a good friend of mine, uh, Nova. He wanted to see this kind of a shader that I do, and I figured I'd show him, and if anyone else wants to try this idea, go right ahead. <laughs> this is actually something I uh, learned from someone else. I, I figured out how they were doing it and started doing it myself, so it's not really my own invention. This is something that's been done before. Anyway, I'll show ya. You're gonna start by, you know, drawing your picture. I'm not gonna go into detail about how to draw a picture. I'm gonna assume you know how to do that. I might go into details and stuff like that later. But we're gonna go with uh, <clears throat> this. Just leave those enabled. And you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a, a painted layer. See, I always separate my uh, my line layers, the line art. separate the uh, the line art from the color so I can, you know, makes it easier. You can do everything any, any way you want. So you take your painted layer, and what you're going to do with that painted layer is you're going to make a new layer right above it. And then you're going to apply clipping group. That'll attach that layer to that layer, that color layer. So everything you do on this adjacent layer messes around with this color. By the way, this is all done in Paint Tool Sci. Unfortunately, I don't know how to do this with any other programs. I'm not doubting they can do it, I just don't know how to do it. So if you can figure it out, more power to you. Anyway, on Sci, this is how you do it. Take that uh, extra layer that you made above the painted layer, and you're going to adjust the mode up here. You're going to switch it from Normal to Multiply. And you're going to come up here to your little square chart, and you're going to come up with a darker color than your character trying to shade it so you know it's something darker. Uh, you know, sometimes you can experiment and pick a lighter color and see how that looks go right ahead. Personally I pick just somewhere in the gray area. I usually pick somewhere in the dark gray area. Eh, it just depends on what kind of darkness they're in. And then you're going to take your bucket tool, go down to target, make sure it's set to working layer, and you're going to click anywhere in the picture and it applies it. See it's really dark. Like, whoa, what's going on? back to your layer, you hit the multiply on it, go back up to opacity, and set the opacity somewhere between, eh, somewhere like in 50% is what I would do, you don't want pitch black, and that's what you're aiming for, and you're going to come back over here to your tools, select eraser, and you're going to select the edge shape, this is the fuzziest, the nice fuzzy brush, that's the best one to use in my opinion, you're going to zoom in nicely, by the way, just for reference, I'm using the Intuos 5 Wacom tablet, so uh, everything I'm doing here is going to be with a pen tablet, so I'm using pressure sensitivity. You can still do this with the uh, mouse, of course, but a lot of stuff like for adding pressure is you know, done with my pen, so my results may vary, basically. <laughs> so you're going to take your eraser, and on that same layer that you applied, that multiply layer, you're going to take the eraser, and you're going to start running the eraser along your drawing. Whether it be a character or a background, this works for anything really that you want to shade. You're going to run it along, run it along. Oh, by the way, for your eraser, you can also keep your density up to 100 for this. You can, you can experiment all you like, but for this demonstration, do it this way. Now, as far as your shading techniques and where you prefer to shade, that's entirely up to you. As you can see, applies the lighting. Basically, this layer is you're applying the entire shading and you're erasing some of that shading to allow for the lighting, where the light's going to hit. Now, to make it easier, I'm going to put the background back on, because it's really hard to see this <laughs> if you don't have it on. There you go. Show you just a bit of this. like. Normally I, on my professional drawings I separate the uh, hair shading level layer with the body, but because this is uh, one of 
of my comic pages. I'm going to keep it all in one. After a while, you have something that looks decent. Not bad. Also, let's just say you make a mistake. Oh, no, no. Alright. Well, to fix that, keeping your same dark color that you used to, uh, to shade here on the multiply layer that you apply with the bucket tool, keep that color, go back down to where it says your brush. I personally pick something like a, a fuzzy brush again because you want to keep the edges nice and soft still. Unless you're trying to go for cell shading, then go ahead and pick a sharper brush. And you're going to take your brush and you're going to go over mistake. Basically it turns it in reverse. Your brush becomes your eraser and your eraser becomes the brush. <laughs> Funny how that works. Alright, you got your mistake fixed. You can go back to your eraser and continue your uh, shading. By the way, I'm using a scroll wheel here on my tablet, I guess you could call it, for adjusting the size of my brush. If you want to adjust your size, if you don't already know this, you just go down here and select your size settings, you can adjust the edge hardness, the quality, all that good stuff. By the way, this is working off of the default brushes right here. If you have custom brushes, that's great. But make sure you have your defaults for this tutorial in order to understand what I'm doing. <laughs> Done. Oops, I did make a mistake there, didn't I? Huh, huh. Fix that. There we go. You can leave it like this, and that's great and all. And, you know, it kind of gives it almost a cell shaded look. But if you want to smooth it out, make it look more three-dimensional, more natural, you're going to go over to your brushes again, select your watercolor tool. There's no name it. Watercolor tool. And uh, you're going to select the soft brush again, soft bristle. And you're going to go over to where it says this side. Instead of normal, put it on multiply. And your minimum size, I put mine at 60%. Density, around 30 you don't want a full strength or else you're gonna, it's gonna be a mess. You take that, and on the same layer that you applied your lighting and your shading there, you're gonna go around the edges, the smaller brush, smaller size, and you're gonna smooth the edges down. This is where a tablet comes in really handy because you can apply a, a different levels of pressure for different for smoother edges. <laughs> if you do it really lightly, you affect it very lightly spread out too much. You put a lot of pressure, you're going to really spread that out. And you smooth this out till you like it. it gives it depth. kind of gives it a three-dimensional feel to it. it. makes it feel more natural, not two-dimensional. Not just a drawing. Now you can do this as much as you like, or you can just do a little bit, a lot. Let me do it like this. 
you can always go back and you can add more and then you go back to your watercolor tool and adjust it again and keep on doing that until you get it the way you like it. As I like to call it, rinse and repeat as necessary. And yeah, go ahead and apply this shading level, this sh style of shading, to just about anything. As long as it has a layer, you can shade it. But remember, it's you have to set it to multiply when you apply the shader. And depending on the size of, the, of your brush here, smaller makes it more fine, more fine-tuned. If you want a bigger, more spread out blending, make a nice big brush. Go along the edges. You still want some of that you still want some of that lighting on the side so don't 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 uh, rub all the way up to the edge or else you'll lose it. You'll start to get a feel for this after you start tinkering with it, messing with it. Start to become second nature. Alright, once you got that down, pretty sweet. I'm not gonna go into every little bit that I do with uh, this, because there's lots of stuff you can do with this. This is just the basics. Once you got that down, well, you'll like it. Obviously, I'm not completely finished, but much of I'm gonna go into today. You got that down. You can adjust the opacity the way you like it if you want it to look more darker and make the uh, lighting stand out more. See, it makes it more toned, more defined. Also adjust your uh, your color if you want to change that shader that that, that shader color because sometimes the lighting in the area is not necessarily just regular white light. You might have a, a yellow light or like a sunrise or a sunset color in the background, so it might affect the lighting color. Well, that's interesting. Let's go up to filter. You can change that instantly without having to redo the whole thing with hue and saturation. Let's open that up. You can adjust the hue. Okay, scratch that. There we go. There it goes. Actually, easier way to show that. I'm gonna make it easier on you. Just make another layer right above the multiply. Another layer. Once again, if you want to just do that layer, not the whole picture, you're gonna apply clipping group to that. You're gonna go up to here and you're gonna select overlay this time. And pick like uh, a color that you want for the lighting in the area. Maybe maybe, maybe it's a sun rise, apply your bucket tool again, working the layer so it affects everything in that layer, and then click. See, kind of an interesting look. Now it looks shh, gold. Man, gold pony. Uh. Well, you're going to go back up here to opacity, you're going to lessen that. You're going to probably lessen that quite a bit, but it does give it a different glow to it. Like the lighting in the environment has changed. Pretty sweet. Now you can experiment with the colors. Different colors give you different effects. Mind you, overlay does not work on whites. It won't show up on whites, just uh, other colors. Let's see what we can do here with this. Look at that. Red. Mind you, you want to keep this pretty low so it just adds a tinge. But too much, it's going to look bloody. A little tinge there. Personally, I'm not going to use that, but <laughs> just an idea. And you can apply that uh, same, yeah. same shader idea to your backgrounds. Once again, select your layer, put a layer right above that new layer, clipping group, multiply, and lower it somewhere between 50% and pick your dark color for the, uh, the shader, some dark color. I keep mine in the dark grays and the blacks. Bucket tool working layer, and then you click in your picture, bam, now you can go to your eraser, make sure it's on fuzzy, 100% density, if you prefer, and you can go through, uh, go through this picture, start uh, adjusting the lighting how you see fit, as a person I have a light, there's a light up here you can't see, but the story itself is a light, start adjusting the lights, the light's coming down from there. watercolor tool. You can adjust those edges just a bit. 
so that they smooth out so they don't look so they don't seem seem kind of well seamless. That's the way light works in our life, really. It's not entirely just straight lines. It's kind of blended in. It's got layers to it. Oh, that's what this watercolor tool does. It blends layers. There you go. See, now it's not complete, but it's a definite start. Definite start to something nice. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. That's a basic look of uh, my type of shading. Uh, as far as my, my more professional pictures, my non-comic book uh, pictures, the ones I do for requests or commissions, I get into more detail with uh, the shading and lighting. This is just the basic I use for comics. I take that a few steps further with my other stuff. <laughs> if, you're any, if you prefer any tutorials on those other things I do, whether it be the, the eye style I use on my professional pictures, uh, maybe my structure of anything. Uh, just leave me a comment. Uh, let me know. If not, then I'm going to assume this is it. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed that and uh, look forward to uh, doing more of these if possible. I will take care of your pony and uh, the horse be with you. <laughs>